Welcome to a parent's nightmare. The violence here seems out of control, but there are rules in all this bedlam and they're being enforced. Rule one, slam dancing and backflips into the crowd are okay as long as no one is intentionally hurt. Rule two, punks can jump on stage, but they're not allowed to touch singers or equipment. Rule three, spitting is encouraged. The kids say this isn't violent at all. They say it's controlled aggression. It should be noted that all this activity is incited by music. That's another thing that frightens parents. In fact, this is a local band called Fear. The lyrics are hostile, crude, and the beat is frantic. Tickets to this concert cost $8.50. It's about living in New York and Philadelphia. Yeah. About uh, bums laying in snot and puke with flies crawling all over them in the heat of July mornings with uh, three or four bottles of cheap wine in their gut and the cars running them over and the cops throwing them into the back of the pig wagons with the uh, pitchforks and people rolling them and flies everywhere and drunks in your doorstep and freezing to death in the morning time, people pushing in front of the subway, get tuberculosis, millions of queers, just like that. <laughs> this is real communication. Yeah, if you go see shit. jazz, they just sit there and talk. They don't even understand what's going on on the bandstand. At least here, everyone's paying attention. They don't all like it, but they're all listening. Yeah, they th at least you feel like you're alive for once. You get the feeling that fear is putting us on. Their music is satire, grotesque satire, but satire nonetheless. Not much comfort if your kid is young, unsophisticated, and takes the message seriously. That brings us to a parent's worst fear that their kids will turn out like this. The theory of life is what you believe in. Punk rock is something that you dedicate yourself to. Just because we're different, they have a spouse attack. So believe in the anarchy, man. It's going to be the way. Parents whose worst fears have been realized have turned to a psychologist who's made relations between parents and punks her specialty. She deals with parents and kids who were frightened and hurt. Her name is Serena Day. People have this vision of groups of parents getting together and trying to stamp out punk, which is not true. Parents of Punkers is a group of people that get together, uh, discuss ways of coping, of understanding, um, information, and it also involves the teenagers. It's not just the parents. Hey, they don't give you one ounce of love. If they would even touch you, you know, he'll let me, if I say, Paul, let me hug you or let me kiss you, he will. He'll let me. He doesn't ever return a hug. I mean, you're just hugging a, a cardboard. He doesn't ever return a kiss. It's a cheek, you know. But that's it. I mean, nothing. Nothing. It was impossible to talk to him for years. He would either be sleeping or uh, uh, he was out. Or if I try to talk to him, you can't get through. There's no rational thinking. At the same time, we allow them to explore a lot because that's a very um, healthy thing for minds to explore, the curiosity. Unfortunately, by the time she had satisfied her curiosity with punk, she became a punk. Chet just didn't seem to care about anything and about anyone, and he didn't seem to care about himself and he's it just to me seems such a waste here it's made us like zombies towards each other i mean we we support each other but we're, we're drained you know we, we just haven't been we're so busy trying to figure out what we can do that we have no energy left uh for each other we, you know it's uh we're not blaming each other you know we didn't we, we at least got enough support from that through the different groups. We, it still left us so drained that uh, it just put our relation on a plateau that is, we're like good friends, you, or friends anyway, not necessarily even good friends. I wish more parents would call me who, um, who wanted to know, to understand, even if their child is not into it to just have some idea of what might happen, what to look for, 
um, so that they're not so they're not shocked when their kid comes home with green or orange hair um, and asks to go to a gig and they don't even know what a gig is. Uh, I think that everybody should learn about it because it is something of the 80s and maybe it'll pass in the 90s but we're still in the 80s. Like what we're trying to do is open their eyes saying hey the world's changing don't be so narrow-minded. That's what punk's all about. I'd left and then um, they didn't want me they didn't want me back because they said I was too out of hand. Or personally I'd rather buy of nuclear fallout than chemical warfare. Why don't they attack that? Mustard gas, you've turned into a big blister. It's painful. I'd rather die instantly. She thinks I'm really morbid. Why? Because I look dead a lot and things like that. Because I keep dead flowers in my bedroom and stuff. So she thinks you're kind of embracing the concept of death. Yeah. Are you? Not really, no. I don't want to bring, I don't want to bring another, another human being, another life form into a, a, a world that just sucks. This world is terrible. I would say, yeah, I agree with you. I can't deny that. But let's take a look at what doesn't suck. And um, kind of let them feed off of, you know, a little bit of what I feel uh, is hope and some of the neat things in this world. This story seems grim, but put it in perspective. In the past, families managed to survive when their kids became hoods, beatniks, or hippies. Each time we thought the kids were insane, each time it passed. Punk will pass too. The other day someone said, uh, they said something like, uh, Johnny, what's wrong with the youth movement of today? And I said, I am no longer a part of it. Uh, so this week, we're going to take a look at today's modern teenagers. You know, the world's getting faster. There are more pressures and anxieties and the choices that they have to make. So this week, we're going to try to help you understand the youth of today and answer the age-old question, what's the matter with those kids today? How cute and how proud the parents must be. But oh, what a difference the years make. Kids, I don't know what's wrong with these kids today. I'm a punk. I'm dissatisfied with your society, man. Kids, who can understand anything they say? It just means individuality. Kids, they are disobedient, disrespectful oaks. Noisy, crazy, sloppy, lazy loafers. They think I'm, like, going crazy or something. They try and put me in a mental institute one time, but it didn't work. <laughs> While we're on the subject, kids, you can talk and Talk to your faces blue. I think they're more worried about the car. They're all, you didn't get the car back at two, like you said, you know. It's like that. It's not it's not really me. I guess they think I can handle myself. Why can't they be like we were perfect in every way? What's the matter with kids today? Every generation asks the same question, and the answer is always the same. Parents worried when Bobby socked kids swooned over a young Frank Sinatra. They worried when a greasy-haired hillbilly brought rock and roll to the kids. They worried when the Beatles brought teenage hysteria to new heights. And when the Woodstock generation arrived, they worried about more than just a new musical style. There was a whole new morality, free love, recreational drugs, and the need for uninhibited self-expression. And that's what this is all about. Back then and today, expressing your own sense of identity. I don't want to have anybody labeling me or telling me I'm wrong or what to do or how to be. I want to be what I want to be, you know? That's all I'm trying to get across. So we have a Mohawk, but it doesn't mean that you hate, automatically hate your parents and they assume that you're rebelling against them. And so these young kids who think, well, I hate my parents, I'm gonna become a punk. Well, they have the wrong idea. That not, has nothing to do with your parents. Well, then what does it have to do with? This is style for me. I'm not into it, because I'm anti-parent, but I'm anti-system. It's like wearing, wearing your mind on your body. It's also about alienation from society and from the family. It's about anarchy, and of course, it's about music. If you're a parent and your child's a punk, this lifestyle may be hard to accept. But the punks claim that they're really not that bad, only misunderstood and misrepresented by the media. 
If any comfort can be offered to worried parents, it's this. The punks we talked to didn't feel that what they were doing was any stranger than what their parents went through in their youth. They seemed to forget that they were young once and had problems with their parents. I'm sure my mother listened to Elvis Presley and her mother got really mad at her saying he's vulgar and, you know, don't do this and don't do that. Well, it's coming around again. It's just another change, another expression. You know, the next thing that we're probably going to see is uh, they're going to be, end up being just like us. They're going to have a house payment and have to buy their own groceries and, well, you get the picture. <laughs> Lifestyle is kind of an unusual thing. We find ourselves in it before we really know what's going on. In the 40s, it was Frank Sinatra. The 50s brought us the twist and the hula hoop. The 60s meant flower children and free love. And in the 70s, that was disco. But now kids are dyeing their hair and doing a thing called slam dancing. And in general, parents do not understand. Serena Dink is a counselor and the founder of Parents of Punks. But we want to show you this is the world in which she works. So take a look. Steal the money from your mother, buy a gun. We destroyed a family. Kill your mother and father. We destroyed a family. Isn't that nice? Serena is there to help you. You know, get back with your parents. She's not there to deprogram you. And, uh, that's about it. Serena's helped me a lot. She's made me be more positive towards the world. I mean, I said the world sucked, but before, I used to think it was much, much worse. She's helped me a lot with my parents. I can talk to my mom a lot more. really helped me with my relationship with my parents. A slice of life. Uh, many people who are probably watching that would say, I would do this, or I would make those kids do that, or whatever. This is Serena Dink. Uh, Serena, how do you communicate uh, with kids that are going through this? Uh, obviously, a lot of parents think that they're absolutely out of control. Are they out of control? I think it's all in the attitude that I have. One of the things I do is I don't judge them. And people look at me and say, gee, you're not punk. And how can they relate to you? And I think the simplest way or to explain it would just say I have feelings for them. They have feelings for me. And it's kind of, I break the stereotype of the adults that are rejecting them. And I encourage parents not to reject them and not to kick them out. Now, this uh, organization, the Parents of Punks, exactly what is that and what are you trying to do? What are your objectives? We're certainly not trying to stamp out punk. Basically, I am the organization. I have no support from the outside world. I started this, and the people that support me are the parents and the kids. Uh, people look at us and look at me and say, why are you doing this? And one of the reasons is to bring more understanding. I get calls from parents all over the country, uh, both United States and Canada, and night and day, just asking for information, asking for ways to get their child back home. I get calls from punks who are out on the street and want to go back home. And uh, I think what's happened is people think that this is a national organization to stamp out punk, and it's not. 